So going, learning going back to geometry, um, what we need to do is we need to remember how to simplify a radical. All right, so going back to simplifying our radicals, actually even part of even on lab algebra one actually, um, what we need to look at this and understand is that we're taking the square root, right? We can only take the square roots of certain numbers to get a rational problem. So you can take the square root of four equals two, the square root of nine equals three, 16 equals four, the square root of five or 25 <laughs> equals five, right? And for this problem, we're just gonna deal with uh, those numbers. Um, so, just for this problem, because that's where we're gonna go to. So our main goal, whenever you're simplifying radicals, at least the way that I wanna explain this one, is we wanna try to get these numbers, we wanna re-represent this problem by only, um, yeah, by only using these numbers, okay? Because we can take the square root of this. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna see, can I transform, all right, the square root of 48 by using these numbers. Rewrite it. And what we can look at this and say, well, is, can I use, and you could say like factor it, can you kind of break down the factor of 48 as using one, as the multiple of one of these numbers? And the answer is? Yes. Yes, you could write it as what? 4 and 12. You could write it as 4 and 12. Um, I would say you could write as 4 and 12, which is not wrong. Um, but you want to, if you do it as 4 and 12, the thing that's going to be tough is you can always, uh, um, you're going to have to simplify it again. So it's, um, well, OK. <laughs> So let's try. So you guys had 4 times 12, right? 6 times 8. 24 times 2. 16 times 3. Those are our three op Those are our options, right? You could obviously do 48 times 1 and stuff like that, but that wouldn't change it. Well, let's look at it this way. You could rewrite this as 2 times square root of 12. The square root of 4, we know is 2, right? Yeah. 12. Can I take the square root of either one of these numbers? No. no, right? So I can't, you wouldn't want to choose six and eight because you can't take the square root of any of them. Here, um, I can't take the square root of 24, nor can I take the square root of two. So again, this one, you would not want to choose again because you can't, remember, our whole goal is, to, it says to simplify the radical. That means I need to see what numbers can I take the square root of. So, so far we only have one we can take the square root of, and that was four times um, square root of 12. Or you could also choose 16 times 3. Can you take the square root of 16? Yeah. Yes. It's 4 times radical 3. Now the reason why I did, um, I said I wouldn't choose this one, there's nothing wrong with this one, but what you notice is you can do this, you can simplify this one again. So it's not wrong, it's just you need to simplify it again. So square root, now you can do square root of 12 can reduce down to 4 times square root of 3 which that becomes two radical three, right? And then there's automatically already a two there, so you'd still get four radical three. Oh. You see the difference? Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with choosing that. Just try to always choose the largest number. So what I had is I had 16 times three. Now when you're dealing with numbers with exponents, that's a little bit different, all right? And the reason why is, um, you guys should know that square root of x squared is just going to equal x, right? So what we want to do is we want to see if we can pair these in it as as many squares as we possibly can. So what I can write this as, you know, x squared, y squared times y squared times y. Why is there that extra y there? Remember, when you're multiplying exponents, you I'm sorry, when you're multiplying numbers with exponents, you're adding the exponents. So this is two plus two plus one. Right? Remember the properties of exponents? When you multiply, you add the exponents. So that's how I'm that's why I separate this one a little bit differently. Well, the square root of 16 is obviously 4. This becomes x times y times y, right? Because those both cancel out to give you your single variable. So you're left with a 3y. So it wouldn't be xy squared? Yep. So then your final answer is 4xy squared times the square root of. 
questions on this? Yeah. Yes. Why don't you do four times twelve? No. Yeah. It's the same thing, just you have another step. I'll pull off the video and I'll show you. 